Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School Tune Track. Just released the Session Player EBX, which is a sound expansion for Easy Bass. It's based on the P Bass, one of the most famous basses, a jack of all trades, a Swiss Army bass, and it's from the 60s. It has flat wound strings on it. Now, forgive my ignorance, flat wound strings, they make less noise when you move your hand up and down the neck on the strings, and those types of strings last longer. They have a long life on the instrument which doesn't matter because we're talking about software so we don't change strings on software but what are the other benefits to flat wound strings and like me comment below now this re was recorded through a vacuum tube di and an amplifier and they do not specify exactly which model amplifier they say this is good for pop, rock, gospel, R&B. There's actually a country song of MIDI included in here. I mean, I could play metal on a P bass. I, I would actually prefer a different bass, but a P bass is a jack of all trades. It's hard to complain when you have one in your hands, uh, especially one to this caliber. So today we're going to hear every preset and we're going to hear every song so you get a vibe of the MIDI that came with this five songs came with this and then we're going to have a little di shootout at the end where we'll compare the di's of different ebx's so i hope that's enough for you it's sean from shooty school let's kick some butt all right let's check out some sounds of the session player easy x and we're not going to start with the clean di i'm going to do a little clean di shootout at the end which i think all uh review overview videos should do i'm going to start doing it let's start with amp booth and let's talk about the presets real quick there's finger presets and pick presets and all these presets under finger are exactly the same as under pick except for two exceptions one exception is ballad bass under is exclusive to the finger preset and power pop is exclusive to the pick preset so I'll, i'm going to bounce back and forth as we move through the video and uh, another thing to point out is i'm using an easy drummer most people use an easy bass probably interested in easy drummer will be here in the southern soul easy x the basic ludwig preset for this song this ebx comes with five songs and we're going to start with the first song we are right here it is a 4-4 swing and it's called soulful so let's rock and roll amp booth all right we have a line and we have an amp this is probably the di and this is the amplifier they use so now we only hear the line yep Bass has a nice touch, it's not dramatic, but certainly working. You can hear the mechanical action more with the treble. Let's check out the amp. Oh yeah, saturation. Good, get a good. Let's hear the default preset. Let's hear amp booth on the pick side. It's as expected. Here's the amp. Make sure I'm not clipping over here. I'm not. Whew. That feels good right there. All right, let's check out the amp and tape finger preset. There's some bass for you. It's pretty typical that their single EQ knob means you're adding bass and it might be doing other EQ shapes as well. I'm not sure what, but it's definitely gonna bring up the bass when you turn up EQ. Compressor, notice it says mix above it and not nothing. It says compressor mix, so it's gonna blend your bass tone with a compressed tone. So if I turn it all the way up, we're just hearing 100% of what the compressor's doing. If we turn it all the way down, we don't hear any compressor. Let's hear the pick version of amp and tape. Definitely a little more tame with this maxed out would be my preference actually this knob should just say power 
cool. Let's do one more preset before we move on. This was, oh, we have ballad bass, which is exclusive to finger. So let's hear that. Whoops. Even though this isn't really a ballad song, there's no ballad, really slow tempo ballad songs in this. You can turn on the drums a little. So instead of having the two different DI and amp modules, now we just have a mix knob. I believe that's what this means. That EQ knob doing what it traditionally does. A lot of power, a lot of low end. Yep. And the compressor. Cool. Let's move on to the next song and we'll cover the next few presets. All right, I'm still using the Southern Soul EZX, but if you buy Southern Soul, it comes with two libraries, 60 and 70s. I moved over to the 70s library. Let's check out Easy Bass. I'm now in the second song, which is still a swing in 4 4. It's called Spirit, and we left off. I just did ballad bass, so let's pick up on Big Amp on the fingers. Let's check it out. Um, we've got some mids control. We have bass, mids, and treble, but two mid knobs. Could probably scoop this pretty easy, I'm guessing. Turn on the drums. Oh yeah. Woo, that's powerful bass knob right there. I typically don't touch sub bass. If you didn't notice, a lot of people don't have the playback equipment to hear it accurately. Um, these headphones are pretty full range. I do hear some sub bass coming out or I have a subwoofer in my, in my studio, but sub bass is that super duper low end that not all speakers can re accurately represent. So you get an idea of what it does. Let's check out Big Amp on the pick end. that articulation from the pick. Now let's scoop it. Cool. So the next preset is British console. What does that mean? An SSL? It's my best guess. Amp blend. So I assume this is the DI in the amp. Um, but you don't have different modules for each, you just blend one or the other. I guess this is the DI. That's just an ignorant assumption, but the EQ, this is abnormal for EBXs, if I remember correctly. Um, now we have not low, mid, high, but we have just a frequency. I'm sure if we turn it up, it'll probably be like a bell curve just on that frequency being in the middle. You can almost look at it like, um, not parallel, uh, uh, GEQ, graphic EQ, almost, except you only get four bands. 110, this is not sub bass at all, this is more of like a knocking bass frequency. More of a firmness than a smoothness is the way I would describe it. Some mids, some highs. And then 10K, it's way up there for bass, so we're probably gonna hear more mechanical noises, maybe slides, or maybe one of the finger frictions against the strings or something, even though these are flat round wound strings. Actually, that click right there I just heard. All right, cool. Um, there's a high pass filter, cool. I hear more bass when I engage a high pass filter. High pass filter means you allow the highs to pass through and you cut the bass. So why do I hear more bass when I engage a high pass filter? There's less bass now. And there's more bass when I engage a high, am I going crazy? Um, if I'm tripping out, someone let me know in the comments. Uh, Oh, there's a tool tip. 
Okay. So it activates a high pass filter at 75 hertz, but it bumps up 80 hertz. Okay. <laughs> Man, that messed with my head. <laughs> Here we go. Cool, as expected. I wonder if we can pull that pick attack out with one of these. Yeah, it seems like you can pull the pick attack out pretty good with the 4.8 uh, kilohertz. Very cool. Let's move on. Let's go to chorus room. I've liked the chorus effects in the past. I've, it was maybe the 80s EBX that I reviewed. Check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. I love. I like the 80s EBX a lot. Great smooth chorus. Let's see if this uh, holds up to that. All right, first impression, it's a little wet. Let me turn off the reverb so we can hear the chorus. I only turned it up on purpose just to hear the extreme. Now let me blend it. Yeah, sounds nice. Yeah, I like the modular effects in the Easy Bass uh, EBXs. Haven't been disappointed yet. Here's some reverb. <laughs> That's dangerous, that knob's dangerous. Yeah. Great. Uh, chorus room on the pick. It's definitely a stereo chorus too. Toss your headphones on if you're curious. All right, we're doing the third song. I've got Funk Master Clyde, old school, easy drummer one. Love that snare though. I love it, dude. I, not even though, I just love it. Um, EBX, we are on the third song. Now we're in straight 4-4. The song's called Soul Funk. And let's check it out. We left off on classic amp. Let's rock and roll. Ooh, get a... Let's get upbeat, people. Let's get upbeat. This is nice. Bringing my morale up. Uh, ultra low, ultra high. It just says that it emphasizes the lows, emphasizes the highs. Let's check that out right away. Low. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful little sweetie knob. Highs. Drums are a little loud. Maybe like the mechanical noises of playing and like the the finger mutes and stuff like that will come out higher on this. Might need a different MIDI file to really get this to emphasize out. But this uh, button's amazing. The ultra low. Got gain. Turn the drums down a little more. Mute the drums for a second. All right. Yeah, there's some distortion in there. I'm not really hearing it come through except for in the low end. Very cool. Am I distorting? Little bit, little bit. It was probably on me doing that bass bump though, so I don't think I'm distorting in general. Two mid knobs. Always love to see that. Oh, and is this just for the amp? Let's see what the tool tip. Amp EQ, amp EQ. Now nah, they're both amp EQs. Okay. Mid range, mid free. Oh, duh. One of them chooses a frequency, I assume this one. So let's see if this does anything. Eh, I don't know if this makes sense to me. These are powerful mid knobs. I'm just not sure why this one says mid frequency and this one says mid range. Typically when I look at a mixing board, it'll say choose which frequency you want to boost or cut. That's not what this is, so <clears throat> if anyone wants to comment below and clarify difference between mid-range and mid-frequency, by all means do so. Uh, regardless, just close your eyes and touch the knobs. You'll get a good difference out of them. I actually like them a lot. Yep, and that treble knob's working really well. Let's go to the pick version of this. Let me try and fly through this. This video is going to be super long. Let's check out 
about that. See if we can hear the high end better. Oh, the bass, the MIDI's shredding. <laughs> this is cool. Anyway, I can hear more what that high's doing. <laughs> That's cool. Let's play that section again real quick. Uh, chorus. Uh, it's Classic amp, let's move on to Dirty and Clean. Let's go back to the top of the song. Here we go. We have a mix of Dirty and Clean, just like the preset implies. Great, let's turn down Clean. Here's Dirty. Yeah, it sounds like the bass guitar version of a synth wave sawtooth. It did for a moment when I was doing that. Let's check out Clean. Yeah. Sounds like a dry, clean bass. Tilt. Let's hear that on Dirty real quick. I can hear what the tilt EQ is doing more on the dirty. Here's the default preset. Let's hear it on the pick. Sure, I'm not distorting. Should be good. Yeah, you can get a good buzz out of this with the pick. It's kind of cool. Makes me want to play some anesthesia pulling teeth. Clean tone? Cool. Uh, line and EQ. This one's called, ooh, I hear some low end coming in. That's for sure. Just a bass and treble knob, and it says tube on it, so some sort of tube preamp or a tube inside the EQ pedal or rack gear. Could have used your imagination a little bit since they're not telling us and showing us. That's a good preset though. Let's hear the pick version. Yeah, super clean. What do we got? Let me, this is song number three, so four, five, let's do one more. Mid-range, medium saturation is called. Let me go back to the top. That shredding stuff is fun, but we can't really hear like what the bass is normally doing down here on the end of the neck to hear these um, presets as much as I want to hear those licks again. Medium saturation, fingers. Not a drastic bass knob, certainly works. That compressor tamed this. Tamed it instead of making it huge. Good to know. Let's see how the pick version before we move on to the next song. Clyde's awesome. Cool. Let's hop over to the next song. All right, I got the old Nashville Easy Axe loaded up, and we are on mid range forward. I feel like this whole Easy you know, EBX about a P bass is all about taming those mids to get the, the sound you want. So let's see what the heck mid range forward even means. We're on the fourth song, which is simply labeled country, which is why I chose the Nashville kit. Maybe they'll mesh together. And let's rock and roll with mid-range forward on fingers preset. 
that was the out. That kind of reminded me of Michael Jackson for one second. Here we go. Turn the drums down. <clears throat> Amp blend. So my guess is that it's always a DI and we're just going to add more amp to it as we turn up. Yep, certainly adding warmth, uh, saturation, mid-range mix. Let's mouse over this mixture. Sure. Mid-range gain is what it says. Highs. Oh, it says high cut. Okay. The more you turn it up, the more you get rid of the highs, I assume. It's actually not a really obvious adjustment to me. I mean, I can hear a change in tonality, but it's not obvious to me that that's a high cut filter or as it says, high frequency filter, so. It's doing something. Uh, here it is on bass, mid-range forward, excuse me, on pick. Yep, it's just gonna thump and knock a little more. Ooh, definitely want that amp blend cranked up for, well, my opinion, of course. All right, what we have next, we have power pop on the pick which is exclusive only to the pick presets let's see what that does let's skip right to the verse line level okay we have separate modules for the di line and for the amp saturation there. Am I distorting? Nope. When I hear that much distortion in the low end, I want to make sure I'm not distorting. Gain staging. In this case, the compressor is not taming, it's monsterifying. Alright, cool. That was power pop. And what do we have left? We have roomy Let's do roomy and deep before we move on to the last one. Oh boy, that is very roomy and deep. Toss your headphones on, definitely a stereo. I'm gonna guess it's stereo reverb. It's also low frequency, it's hard to pinpoint. Okay, so here's our DI, here's our amp. doing what the single EQ knob typically does definitely adding low end not sure what else compressors definitely taming some of that low end which is probably good for roomy and deep there's a lot of bass in here here's a dry wet um, here's the pick version are still doing its job really well there. All right, and for the last song, I put up the last S, the latest SDX, Stockholm, and I chose the Rock Basic preset. I think I just turned up the ambient mic a little bit so it didn't sound so dry. And on Easy Bass, we are at Scanner Vibrato. Here we go. And that bass volume is low. I just maxed out my fader on Reaper, yep. Here we go. Mm. 
mode vibrato type selector. It doesn't sound like it's adjusting speed and I actually don't really know what mode means with vibrato. Let me know, comment below please. Regardless, there's your vibrato effect. We have spring reverb, classic, dwell. I'm not used to the term dwell. I'm pretty sure it means uh, duration or sustain how long the reverb or ambience lasts for. I'm just not used to seeing dwell myself. I used to own a Fender Twin 65, so I know spring reverb pretty well. And you can hear that little artifact on those uh, finger mutes. Cool, let's scan your vibrato on the pick. Uh, that's way louder. Not distorting, we're good. move on to the last one which is studio preamp All right. oh we can engage or disengage the actual preamp and it just has gain bass treble probably hear that more in the pick preset we'll see See the pick preset. The dynamics of the MIDI files we're using definitely plays a role in a lot of these tones, so you have to have an open mind. Is the guy playing hard? Well, some presets might sound harsh. Is the guy playing quiet with lower dynamics? Some of these presets might seem weak or, or maybe in a sweet spot, so you always have, gotta have an open mind with what MIDI are you hearing right now and what other MIDI could you be hearing instead. Big difference there. Bass knobs work in treble knobs. A little subtle. Yeah, I hear it now, right? Had to wait for a higher note for it to really pop for me. So that's it. That's all the presets. That's uh, not every MIDI file, but every song roughly so you get a vibe. I hope hearing the sounds in the MIDI was beneficial to you. Now we're gonna do a DI shootout. We're gonna take the core library DIs and all the EBX library DIs and we're gonna play them all back to back a few seconds at a time and I'm just gonna loop a little rhythm lick that has a little lead at the end so we can hear the contrast between all of these instruments. It'll help us make better decisions on what we want because the DI is the foundation of the tone that we build upon.
This is Sean from Shooty School. I hope this video was valuable to you. I have two Toon Track themed social and support groups on Facebook and Discord. If I've ever made your day, please consider contributing to me so I can make more content for you. I also have an exclusive members program for more exclusive content. Links for all this are all down below. Rock on.